Hi, I'll make this quick so we can get right into the uh, presentations. We have, um, as we know, there's a lot of work that has been done, but much more that needs to be done. And we have uh, organizations and researchers that have made progress in different areas of technology and um, data collection. So we're going to start this session. We have um, I think three presenters that are here, and then the last two will be remote. So we'll start with Chile. If you could come up. And then he can pass the ball on to the next. Are you ready? Hi, everyone. OK, so the, uh, my name is Chi. Uh, I work for a company called uh, Inner Systems. <laughs> I know it's so exciting to be uh, back in person again. and. Uh, 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 I'm sure the conversation is uh, uh, definitely very relevant to uh, to the community. Uh, so I'm just going to drive through my presentation very quickly. You can see the title is uh, How We Can Simplify Research Data Management. Uh, earlier, Griffin actually talked about what is uh, really, and uh, also uh, Kavi as well, what is really about uh, I2B2. And uh, what I see this is uh, a lot of data management. And uh, uh, in this case, uh, we'll really focus on how, how to simplify things. As you know, the great technology is actually make things simpler, not necessarily more complex. Um, so uh, folks might not know Inner Systems. Uh, you might say, well, this isn't this the mom's uh, company, and, uh, which is true in a way that uh, many years ago, uh, uh, Inner Systems commercialized the mom's technology and uh, make it into a more of a commercial offering uh, and called a cachet. And uh, I always say the, the company has a very close history with uh, Mass General, and uh, the headquarters is really across the river. But there are many things that we're doing. Uh, I think uh, over the past 43 years or so, the company grew very big. Uh, what's, what's most important is that uh, everybody hear about uh, Epic, and uh, so Epic is built on uh, inner system technology. And uh, I would also say that uh, very important is uh, it's not MOMS, it's not Cache, it's Iris now, the data platform. Uh, this evolution is fairly critical. And uh, two years ago, Epic decided that they are going to adopt Iris as a platform as well. So what does that mean? It's uh, Iris stands for intuitive, reliable, uh, interoperable, and scalable. All these are attributes. And uh, so what I will talk about today is really three aspects of it, which I think is uh, tremendously important for any I will say, uh, uh, technologies that's in the clinical space. Uh, so the three areas are including uh, the cloud. How do we make uh, the database management in the cloud and make it very easy? Uh, so this is where the Iris Cloud solution, uh, which we actually start building technologies uh, to support I2B2 database, uh, data model, so you'll see that. Uh, as uh, uh, Zach earlier talked about fire interoperability, how to get a data in a form fire into the I2B2 tables and the vice versa. And that part become also very important, especially if you're using the, uh, the I2B2 data model, not just for clinical research, but maybe also for the clinical decision support, uh, pop health management, all these use cases requires a lot more flexibility uh, in terms of getting the data out of I2B2. And uh, I, I'm glad to hear that somebody was talking about self-service uh, uh, the, the key word is self-service, right? The, you can build the queries, build the cohorts, and uh, so we're expanding that by uh, including this more advanced self-service analytics as well. So I think uh, one thing I ju just want to say is that uh, it's uh, very exciting to uh, try to get uh, academia, and I was on the academia side of, you know, many years ago, and many were former colleagues in the, in the industry have a lot more collaboration, which is uh, fairly essential. There are many aspects of the industry solutions can really um, give a boost to the, the, the core technology, especially in the I2B2 domain. Uh, so I think uh, this type of collaboration will be uh, very useful. 
the uh, instead of uh, doing the demonstration, I'm just gonna be in the interest of time. I'm just gonna drive through uh, quite a few screens in the as a uh, sort of a pseudo product demo in a way. Uh, but I'll make all the resources available so that you can uh, see them. And uh, if you want to check it later on, you can you know just go to the website. So the first thing I want to talk about is uh, Iris Cloud Service. Uh, this is a new offering, so it is a early access request available. Uh, so anybody go to this website, you can request for early access, and I'll walk, walk you through this. The whole premise is that uh, you want to build a I2B2 repository, use the data models, start piping data into it. Uh, you want to have the analytics tools on top of it or the query builder on top of it. How could you deploy it in a very scalable and in the cloud natively? You know, this is, is really the premise. So what we're doing here is I'm just going to drive through some screens very quick. And uh, oh, use the right arrow, you know. <laughs> All right. So first is uh, when you go to the website after you request, after you, uh, basically you had to register and get an account and so on and so forth. And uh, but if once you get a uh, account, you can say I want to create a new deployment, and uh, it will be uh, called a, a Cloud SQL. That's the the service, and there are a whole bunch of other services. But today I'm just focusing on the Cloud SQL. Here you scroll down, uh, and we deploy that on uh, AWS first. And uh, I noticed that later on there's another talk about the uh, cloud deployment. So these are common things everybody's familiar with. And uh, so we can deploy that, and uh, there's uh, some of the size and storage that you want to select. And uh, all these early access program uh, initially is all free. Basically, you request it, you can do everything with it. Now, what's interesting there is, uh, of course, I give it a name, I2B2 Cloud. Um, is that uh, uh, so? Once I uh, once I basically uh, review everything, and uh, I can just uh, click a button and uh, create it. Uh, it takes about two point three seconds. No, just kidding. It's two seconds, <laughs> but it's very quick. And it says it's running. And uh, once it's running, uh, then you can start building the uh, data models, definitions, start loading data, or selecting a connection driver to it. And uh, all this is, uh, first of all, when you create it, you have a uh, kind of a password that you would put in. And you, call, you can also share that with others, other what, they call, what we call the tenants that can access it and access the data. So it's very much of a you have full control over there. Uh, this is where you set, can set up the connection, get a connection detail. So you might want to have uh, uh, additional different type of uh, uh, APIs uh, from your application to the uh, data model, or if you want, just want to run R, and we have yet actually tried to get the uh, query builder to uh, to connect to this cloud instance. This is where I'm going to work with Anatoly's team from FirstLine to do more work in this area. Um, but this is where you will say, okay, now I'm going to, uh, in this case, it's called import files, but it's really creating the, the database schema, and uh, I'm going to fly through it. Uh, you upload some files. Uh, this is SQL file. And it will basically create tables and indices, and uh, it will be complete. And uh, when it's fully executed, and then you have an online environment you can verify. And uh, of course, as you uh, build, uh, connect it to a uh, application or a kind of a data feeding mechanism, uh, maybe the ETL process later on, if there is a direct mechanism to uh, send the data in, that will be certainly the way to go. Uh, you can also certainly use a CSV file to. Uh, upload it, uh, import your data if needed. Um, but anyway, this is a, a new way of uh, deploying uh, the I2B2 in the cloud, and we'll have a lot more support and, um, down the road as well. The second part is uh, fire interoperability. Uh, now, this is a part that uh, I know Zach mentioned, it, and um, uh, we actually had an elaborate demo, but uh, in the interest of time and also connecting to a demo server is uh, rather uh, difficult, so I'm going to speak to a few things. We're using an approach which is called, it's a inbox. Um, so this is a very common thing. Uh, inner system is really, it's uh, uh, other than the, the, the database, the, uh, the cache and the iris, you know, where claim to fame is also another thing called the integration engine, called Ensemble, which is all about business processes, operations, and uh, which is a look, if you look at the middle, this is where the operation processes, you can program it and so that actually it be very intelligently can weave together, became a workflow. And then as the data move through the entire process, you can see the tracing at the bottom as well. So we use the same approach to say that fire resources on the left hand side, you drop in the inbox and uh, the process will automatically checks for new files and so on and so forth. 
and then we'll uh, process it and uh, put into the I2P2 uh, database. And uh, vice versa as well. If you have a process you want to initiate, it will query the I2P2 repository and then build out the fire resources and uh, put into the outbound. Uh, I'm using the, the inbox, outbox uh, at this point. Uh, but of course, it could be API driven as well. And you can trigger a call into one of the processes and uh, start the process. So with a few weeks of work, uh, I believe Anatoly's team is very talented. We basically build out the transformation for patient demographics, encounter, practitioner, medication, diagnosis, and procedures resources in FHIR. So you can use those. Uh, we want to make these as a uh, contribution to the community. Uh, Iris for Health has a uh, free license model uh, to uh, up to a certain like a database size. Uh, so this is something that you can take advantage right away. Uh, depends on the size of uh, your implementation. You may be able to use it just for free and uh, to uh, take advantage of uh, some of the fire transformation capabilities in your work. Um, so I had this uh, demonstration link and uh, some additional link here uh, in the uh, in the PowerPoint. The, uh, some of the detailed views. Now this, the red box on the right is an example of the, the inbox. This is where you define the directory in the, in the workflow tool and then drop the files in and it will be able to process it right away. And vice versa, we're showing you an example where uh, we're running a query to take the data uh, from the I2P2 repository and then it initiate the process and the translate into these fire resources and to put that in the outbox area as well. Uh, so there's a few ways that we're doing to, uh, uh, this is the, probably the, the simplest, uh, simple, uh, simplest way to demonstrate the capabilities. But the key thing is around the transformation and also the process automations that are doing. Um, the last technology I want to talk about is self-service analytics. Now, this is another interesting, uh, very important part of it is uh, uh, InterSystem works with uh, uh, many horizontal technology players uh, in the entire industry. And I don't know what, if Lee is here, and he's from uh, this company called Ascale. Uh, basically, it's a, uh, it's a semantic layer. It's a uh, OLAP tools on top of I2B2 on Iris. It already has all the building capabilities on Iris and uh, with this uh, uh, Ascale product. Uh, so started a couple years ago, we decided to work together and uh, really make these self-service analytics model to the, uh, to the I2B2 um, and also anybody on the IRIS platform. Now, uh, what this does is it's a semantic modeling layer. Uh, so of course you can create SQL views, and, but in this case it's a, it's a lot more flexible uh, modeling capability and uh, perfect timing for Lee to join the <laughs> conference here and uh, he's from uh, Scale. And uh, it creates a multi-dimensional data model and uh, where you can run a lot of analysis and the performance is really good. Now, what's key here is that uh, a lot of folks, especially on the researcher side, I think earlier folks already talked about, you would like to do analysis, do what if hypothesis testing without relying on the programmers uh, running up, you know, SQLs and so on and so forth. And uh, having this layer will become uh, very useful uh, for you to explore. And you can support the BI team, could be the business analyst team or the clinical analyst or the data science team as well. And I have a few screenshots here to go through. Now, this is a view is uh, very interesting. When we start the project, I say, okay, these are the I2P2 tables. But, the, uh, but what's most important part of it is actually to create these relational table renderings like medications and diagnoses that most of the uh, researchers are, com are familiar with. Uh, these are the medications, these are the diagnoses, these are lab results, right? And uh, also need to run it very efficiently, very quick. And uh, so that was the initial uh, kind of request. Uh, so in this case, uh, the, uh, the SGL, this is a data mod modeling tool uh, that shows the diagnosis dimension uh, is designed underneath it, it's a SQL, right? So that's the first step. The second step is really around how to uh, make these uh, dimensions and the measures are very much a self-service uh, in this case. So what, what this is doing is that uh, it, it makes the, all these uh, uh, measures and uh, dimension definitions and expose that in the Tableau tools. Uh, so behind the scene, it's actually sitting on top of the SGL models, the cubes and uh, dimensions, measures, and so on and so forth. And now you can drag and drop. 
Now, what's key here is that, of course, I don't have any performance metrics, and you know, the, the goal is actually to try it. But if you have a large data set, and uh, if you have to, always have to run SQL queries against the raw data, it's uh, sometimes it could be challenging, and especially if you have complex queries. And if most of the analysis is a kind of a what-if scenario, trial and error, and uh, Using uh, the SQL platform, uh, it can really cache a lot of data, make the performance much quicker. Uh, so from end user point of view, it's much easier. Uh, I don't know how many of you have used OLAP tools before, and uh, this is one of the important things. As you're running analysis, in a few seconds, you can see the results right away. You can build up pivot tables, and uh, you can render all these um, uh, analysis to draw some conclusions. So this becomes very important as you're exploring it. That's the self-service part. Now, this is an example uh, focusing on the, the, I believe it's the diagnosis and the breakdown by gender. And uh, another example is uh, list all the medications by number, uh, number of patients. Uh, so this becomes very quickly uh, for you to do analysis. Now, I just want to uh, re, uh, just summarize the three things I talked about. Uh, make I2B2 cloud native. It's on the Iris platform in a fire interoperability where you can bi-directionally share data, exchange data, and, uh, and also self-service analytics. And uh, this is remind me my time is up. <laughs> and uh, self-service analytics, and uh, really to help you to take advantage of the data that you already spent a lot of time and uh, enrich it and uh, put it into the I2P2 repository. Uh, here are my contact info. And uh, Anatoly uh, is uh, from a first line. He's sitting over there taking a photo of me. Thank you very much. You just got off the airplane, and I really appreciate that. And the uh, Lee um, from ESCO as well. You know, feel free to talk to any one of us during the break. Thank you. <laughs>